What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and in today's video, we got a ton of news to cover. We're going to talk about my solar production, we're going to talk about 4090 hash rates, we're going to talk about LHR. Was it something in the hardware, or was it something in the software? Also, we got 3050 hash rates doing some changes, and the Intel Arc A770. It's finally available, but where are they at? So without further ado, let's take a look at the GrowWatt dashboard here. So as you can see today, we produced 32.1 kilowatt hours so far, and I think that's probably gonna be the max. It is getting pretty close to sundown, and a pretty decent day for solar production. Uh, if we take a look at the daily, uh, you can see I've only had it installed for about 13 days, and of those 13 days, only about 11 of those days I've been on my net meter. So since the inception, I have had 412 kilowatt hours produced over the course of about 13 days. And yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of really cloudy weather, a lot of rainy weather. You can tell by looking at the chart here, it was just solid rain all day uh, on October 5th all the way until October 10th, which is kind of unusual for where I'm at in West Texas, but it was much welcomed by the farmers, of course. Uh, but the solar system didn't perform all of that all that well, and that's to be expected. I mean, you got nothing but clouds, so obviously, you know, any solar production whatsoever with nothing but cloud cover is better than nothing and on the days that it's been sunny it looks like we're averaging roughly between 31 and 33 kilowatt hours something like that which is a little underperforming my expectations so far but i think that may have something to do with the fact that one of the solar panels is not connected if you guys watched my previous videos one of the positive leads coming out of the solar panel was damaged and I ran out of MC4 connectors, so I'm actually short one 250 watt solar panel, so we could be getting just slightly more. Uh, and then of course we're in October, so you know, is the sun at its full brightness, and what time is the sun coming up versus what time it's going down? Uh, my expectations on good days was to hit about 36 kilowatt hours per day, so yeah, I think we're getting pretty close to that. Uh, anyways, let's move on and talk about 4090 hash rates. So if you didn't catch Rabid Mining's 4090 hash rate video live, you should definitely go check it out. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's make sure we give credit where credit is due. And also, uh, Chump Change XD and Rondi covered the 4090 hash rates as well. Now, I was working while both of these streams were going on, so I did my best to get as much information from it as I could, and I jotted down some notes. And I want to share those hash rates with you guys real quickly. So, taking a look at the spreadsheet here, Rabbit was able to uh, test Caspa, Ergo, Flux, Raven, Radiant, Ethereum Classic, Conflux, and he dual mined Ergo and Caspa. And as you can see here, we got 2189 mega hash on Caspa, which is phenomenal. Uh, he had the core set at 250, memory locked at 810, and power was 250. And I'm sure you can pause this and go through these, but what was really surprising to me was Radiant, coming in at almost 4000 mega hash. Now, I would have expected the power to be about the same as Caspa, but for whatever reason, uh, even with locked memory at 810, he was still using about 400 watts. I think this card could probably get up to 4 giga hash, maybe if we increase the power limit a little bit. But uh, yeah, it basically looks like a beefed up 3090 Ti, essentially is all it is. And watching this video, one of the things that Rabid mentioned was the fact that in order to install this on Hive and mine with it, you had to have the latest drivers. And he warned everyone, don't put your 3000 series cards in with a 4090 if they're LHR because the new drivers are going to force LHR on the other cards. However, 
we discovered very interesting information from this. Apparently, the new drivers are not LHR, which means that NVIDIA was lying the whole time about it being something in the hardware also in in confluence with the drivers so apparently that's been debunked and it was all software it wasn't anything to do with the hardware uh, and son of a tech had a video earlier today uh, showing hash rates on a 3050 which uh, were decent but power wasn't all that impressive I don't know how much time he spent dialing in the overclocks but it looks like we were coming in at close to 30 mega hash at around 75 watts in software which is not as good as a 6600 or a 6600 XT so I don't know if we can get this power usage maybe a little bit lower then not not a terrible card for mining um, you know, the only thing that I know of that he tested was Ethereum Classic, uh, but perhaps it's a beast on other algorithms. If you've got a 3050 out there and you want to give it a shot, I say update the drivers. Make sure you know how to roll them back just in case. But I'd be interested to see what kind of hash rates we're getting out of the 3050 on all of the other algorithms. Now, if I can get my hands on a 3050, I'll test it for you guys, but I'm sure somebody out there will will get their hands on one or already has one and can test it for you. So if I find that, I'll share it with you guys. And then also, um, you know, again, props to Rabid Mining for being the one who discovered this uh, and props to uh, Son of a Tech for sharing his findings on the 3050. Uh, I believe he also tested Ergo, but I, I didn't get a chance to see what hash rates and wattage usage was on that. Uh, next, let's take a look at the farm. The farm is currently profitable on Caspa. Um, I'd have to run napkin math to figure out where we're sitting on Radiant, but both of these coins have dipped a little bit. Uh, but if you take a look at my farm, we're getting about 12.53 giga hash at about 2300 watts. And using just what's in software, uh, the farm would be coming in at 36 cents a day in profit at six cents per kilowatt hour which is about what I'm at after my solar is taken into account but you know I, I'm gonna continue to mine Caspa I, I believe very strongly in the project uh, and I know that it is not always going to be GPU mineable so you know I know difficulty is high on everything now that Ethereum has gone proof of stake but I think this one is worth accumulating especially if I can do so without taking a loss uh, as far as the additional news we had today, uh, I wanted to tell you, somebody asked me today, Mr. Vegas here asked me if I had gotten my A770 yet, and essentially th this is what I'm looking at, guys. So if you take a look at the Intel Arc A770, um, there are three versions that are supposed to be available right now. However, there's only two that launched. So the first two are the Intel version, of course, and then also, I believe, ASRock has one as well. The only places that they're available, from what I can tell, is going to be Newegg and Micro Center. However, uh, Micro Center has only got three cities in the United States that has them. I believe they all sold out immediately. And same thing on Newegg, just sold out within 15 minutes. As far as I know, I haven't run into anybody that has this card yet. So if you have a card, please do me a favor. Leave a comment down below. Would love to know what kind of hash rates you're getting and also what miners are supporting it. As soon as I can get my hands on one, I will test it for you guys. But um, I'm also talking to IE Doc in the Discord uh, about getting the drivers and it looks like the drivers are available. I'm sure that HiveOS will probably have them for Linux pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, BZ Miner may be putting out a, a version very quickly, um, depending on what he's got going on. Uh, but yeah, perhaps BZ Miner will be one of the first miners with the ability to mine on the A770. Um, now, as far as the A770, which version you know is going to be best, 
so far from what I can tell, it looks like the uh, Predator, which is going to be made by Acer, is going to have a 2400 megahertz boost clock, which is a little bit better than, I think, the stock, which is coming in at 2100 megahertz. So, yeah, if I could get my hands on that, I totally would. But ironically, when you go to their website and you hit shop now, uh, you're going to get results zero. So, I don't know if they did sell any on the 12th or if they just haven't released it yet at all. Um, but if you've got any information on that, please leave a comment down below. And the last thing I wanted to tell you guys was thank you. We are almost up to a thousand subscribers and this has been just absolutely an amazing journey. You know, when I decided to start a YouTube channel, I, I intentionally wanted to start this in the bear market because I knew I wouldn't have a very large audience and I knew I was going to make a lot of mistakes. And you guys have stuck with me through those mistakes and I just want to say thank you. It's only going to get better from here. Really appreciate it, guys. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe. I got a lot more great content coming your way. I'll be with you all the way through the bear market and the next bull run. So let's get it. Thanks, guys. I'm out.